What do you want to know? When are you coming back to Days of Our Lives? I want Eugene back. <laughs> Um, they asked me to come back to Days of Our Lives for a very shortish period, sort of like a little cameo type of thing. Um, I don't know, was it two or three years ago, three or four years ago, something like that. Um, I, I decided not to, not because I, I in any way uh, don't like the show or anything like that. Um, I, I actually probably had more fun acting on Days of Our Lives than any other show I've worked on. Um, the problem is this, is that it's 30 years since I've been on that show. I'm not the same person. The notion that I would go back and play sort of the same kind of, you know, crazy, wacky sort of guy um, it, it is, um, is not good because you cannot really recreate. You can only create. And, um, and I just felt the whole thing... Also, the, the people who ran the show were no longer the same. Um, um, Al Rabin, who was the executive producer when I was there, was a, a little Chicago sort of, you know, the, the, um, uh, the guy who probably got thrown out of school or had a lot of detentions <laughs> like I did. And he really enjoyed my sense of humor and, and, and we, you know, he, he encouraged all of that. Uh, it would need, it would require having all of those things in place to be able to, to allow the audience to, to enjoy themselves. And then there would be so many people who would go, oh, it's not like it was. You know, so it's, it's a little bit like going back and visiting your you know, that boyfriend or girlfriend, <laughs> where you kind of go, whoa, what was I thinking? <laughs> huh. um, you know, you've been in so many classic shows, you've obviously created some iconic characters, you've been able to work with some amazing actors. So I was wondering, who was more fun to work with, um, Burt Convy or Doug McClure? <laughs> <laughs> this is death, death Flight, for those of you that don't go old school. <laughs> 77. Right. It's like, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know who was more fun. I, I was sort of mostly just in awe of all of it, and for frankly, quite frankly, the person who I remember the most mm -hmm. is uh, Billy Crystal. Really? Okay. Yeah, because uh, Billy and I had a really good time. I just saw him a couple of weeks ago. I auditioned for a new show that he's, that he's doing. Um, he's really the one I remember. Excellent. Okay. Uh, 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 Doug McClure was 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 very nice, but you know. But he was Doug McClure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's some good stuff. You really got to find that. Trust no, me. No, you don't. <laughs> it's no, you are a darling newlywed. Let me it's, tell you, you're a darling newlywed. Uh, right. Challenge accepted. Okay. <laughs> okay. The internet. <laughs> Question. Well, now that you've done uh, Torchwood Miracle Day, uh -huh. you, uh, if I'm right, you are now one of only 25 people who are part of the Star Trek universe and the Doctor Who universe. Uh -huh. So that's, in 50 years, you're one of only 25 people. So how, I don't know, does it, does, it, it, does it impact you or does it mean anything big to you that, or how does it feel, I don't know, to be part of two such huge... Well, now that you brought it no. up, I think I should take it seriously. <laughs> I, I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it. I, I, you know, most actors don't really think of it that way. You're really thinking of it from the point of view of sitting in the audience. I mostly think of things, and you have to understand, I watch very, very little, almost nothing. I think of it simply in terms of production. And um, somebody asked me to, not too long ago about. Um, I had made a comment where I say I don't really work for people, you know. Um, and they said, "Well, you work on shows and you work on plays, and there you there you are working for someone, you know, it's the person who's hiring you." And you go, "Well, no, acting is so interior mm -hmm. for me, at least, that it's my own little bet noir, and whether I can, you know, stand up to my own little issues and what have you." And so each production has that has that thing in it. So I think I think of shows in terms of how did I do? Was it what I thought it was going to be? How did how did 
was I able to do this or not do this? And oh, how can I fix that later on? I, so I, I'm thinking of it in terms of that. I, I hardly ever think of it in terms of like Doctor Who and Star Trek. So, so I, I just never think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you this much. I really enjoyed the people I worked with on that show. Good. It was great fun. Um, the actors were great fun to work with. I, the production company was fun. Everybody worked really hard, as you always do. Uh, I was just shooting a show last week, I guess, or two weeks ago. Uh, right across from the same sound, sound stage as we were doing, as we did um, <coughs> Torchwood. Uh, so I, I had it kind of came back into my memory, but it, that's what I remember, and the fact that I didn't die. <laughs> well, I was supposed to. As a matter of fact, what I did is that is that you know we were, there was a death scene. Everybody was dying at the end. So, mm -hmm. so I, um, I I too like all, everybody who writes movies is almost everybody who writes movies uses the same program. Uh, final draft. Um, what I did is that um, uh, for the scene, that page where I die, I went home the night before and I wrote out a whole new section hmm. where I actually I live and out of the smoke of the explosion, I come out <laughs> of the slow motion and, 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 I, and, I, and I have a, I have a, a scissors in my hand and the, the girl, who, whoever it was, I can't remember this, uh, but I remember there was a woman there who's the one who created the explosion. I go, not so fast, bitch. The scissors come and the hair like this, and she dies. And, and then everybody comes around me and goes, you've saved the day. I mean, uh, and I handed them around to all of the, <laughs> the director. I said, oh, oh by the way, these, these Pages just came in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fun. <laughs> Did you decide to film it just uh, just cause? What's that? Did they decide to film that just cause? No. They, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they got a good laugh, <laughs> which was worth the effort. <laughs> okay. Next. Thanks. Uh, um, I know you've done like uh, TV. You've done film. You've done video games. You've done voice acting. Um, what do you, is there one that you like? particularly more, or do you approach them differently, the same? Because um, I've talked to a lot of different actors that, that look at it all differently. I was just curious about what your take is on the different uh, mediums in which you act in. Um, the medium is not as important as the material. That's yeah. really where it's at. So if it's good material, and it fits the medium, then you're like, oh wow, this is really something that I'm delighted about. Um, I remember one of the first video games in which I did, which was right at the very beginning of all of them. And you never got scripts or anything like this. And I'm, hang on, I'm in the booth, I'm going, fine. I go, wait a minute, I, I, I don't understand. I said to the person on the other side of the class, I, I'm, I, I, this is like a drive-by shooting. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, actually, it is. I, it was more like, yeah, actually it is. <laughs> I go, well, that's horrible. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I can't be doing this. So, I, I, so you have to be really careful about the material that you do. And, and, and the, the better the material, the more fun the project. And then if you add to that, you know, whatever, a, a fun cast, nice director, you know, license, location, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, um, so for me, it's the material. It's not the, um, it's not the medium. And they are all different, and they all have to be approached a little differently. Groovy. Um, you know, something that did look fun. It looks like so much fun every time I watch it. It's one of my favorite lost shows, I guess, was ahead of its time. You're not going to come back to a, a SST Death Lab. No, no. Next time I'm jumping to Legend, because that's oh, my Legend. absolute oh. favorite yeah. thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why the world didn't catch on to that. I don't know if you were just ahead of your time, but it seems like a steampunk Doc Brown would so fit into this net today. Um, how did you get involved with that? Because that's the one thing I was like, wow! Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I'm very bittersweet about Legend. Um, uh, Michael Piller, who wrote um, uh, Star Trek, mm -hmm. who was the executive writer, executive producer on Star Trek, one of them, um, 
wrote Legend. He called me up and he said, I have, um, I've written a legend, uh, it's called Legend, um, it's, the, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's for the pilot, we have 13 already sold on, and uh, I'd love for you to do the role. Um, the role is of, a, a, I forget what it was, a Bartok, something Bartok, but he said it's, 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 essentially, it's essentially Nicholas Tesla. <laughs> Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, the problem with that was that it was for um, UPN, not to be confused with UPS. <laughs> um, a, uh, a, a um, you know a fledgling startup of a network, and uh, into that came a new head. So we started with one person who was running the network, and then in the middle of that came another person who was starting. Who, who, oh, who, and oftentimes what they do is, is that they wipe the slate clean of the things, of the projects that were the old person, you know, the, the, the former director's thing, and they put in their own. And that's, it was, it was, it was a political issue, a problem. It was a timing issue, and it also was um, UPN, as I recall at the time. I don't know. UPN doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, they're just CW now. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> they had they had no affiliate um, stations. Uh, you know, it's all affiliates. Right, right, right. So, so it wasn't like everybody in America was watching Legend at eight o'clock at night on whatever. Um, it's that they were watching it at, at 4.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, on and on. You can't, you can't, you can't build audience that way. Uh, so while it was well reviewed, and ironically after we were canceled, apparently the year later or two years later, um, the, the word went out is that we're looking for a, um, a series just like Legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did you just bring us back? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that was the, that was the deal. Okay, wow, yeah. great. Lost moments in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is there anything you've ever turned down that later on you've seen someone else maybe take over, like do the role that you decided not to do? That you look back and you're like, wow, I really wish I had done that after all, or I don't know. Oh, uh, nothing really that comes to mind. I mean, you know, I'm not a star. So what happens when you are a, a, a real name actor is that you can sit in the middle of the circle and all around you are choices, okay? Mm -hmm. Most actors only have that for a very, m most actors never get that. And the few actors that do get that, they have that for a very short period of time. You know, we might have perhaps, let's say, 20 A-list actors who have been able to have that for, you know, like De Niro or something like that for Tom Cruise for an extended period of their career. But, but uh, for actors like myself, it's mostly a linear experience. So a job comes in, it doesn't really necessarily interfere with another job, you don't know what the one's going to be after that, and you just take them as they come, uh, or you fight for them as they come. Uh, so there are a few things that I have turned down, uh, but they were not, well there are actually a number of things I've turned down, but I don't, first of all, I don't necessarily track who did it. Because if I turn it down, it's because I'm not interested. So I'm certainly not interested. But I'm like, oh well, now I want to see how somebody else did it. <laughs> I'm like, who cares? Well, that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, and you turn things down mostly because the material isn't good, or they're paying you so little. I know the notion is is that all actors are you know in the one percent or what have you, and that's just really it's it's that's because the general public thinks of actors as being like Tom but the vast majority, 95% of our union is out of work all the time. Mm. All the time. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, it's only when you get into the, about the 97th percentile 
are there are those of us who make an actual living at it. So yeah. it's it's very the notions are different. Uh, I mean, the reality is different than what the notions are. Yeah. Um, so, what was it like attending your first science fiction convention? Because I've talked to a lot of actors and stuff like that, and they're just like, like wow, you know, this, this fandom. I think we live in a society where the other um, is, is um, there's a sort of a general acceptance of just slamming anybody who doesn't sort of agree with you. You know, the, 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 the you know, you know well, you have you have a nail polish on. That means you are a you know a pervert. Okay. Oh, that's Carla. <laughs> uh, uh, and you kind of go, uh, so this 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 was a documentary about you need to get beyond the cover, guys. And it was actually really brought out by the fact that you know Fox News and some of these other trash channels. Um, or, 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 or things, they, they were they were willing to just go to the most prurient and, and dismissive level of commentary without going. This is a show about being about friendship being you know, being really important, about honesty and loyalty and. And you know what are the other five? <laughs> and, and, and because somebody has you know nail polish on, we're going to slam them. I, I, that can't be. That just can't be. I don't want to live in a, in a world like that. Uh, we're, we're already killing each other for all sorts of other reasons. I mean, do we have to do that? Mm -hmm. So that's how that got. I mean, Mike Brockoff was the one who pushed me. Because at first I, I went, oh, I'm not touching. <laughs> but but after meeting a bunch of bronies, I went, wow, what's the what's the problem? What's the problem? So uh, and I saw them, uh, you know, not unlike. Frankly, everybody is going to be downstairs. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I went. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, in what in the movie where I, in the documentary where I take the the father. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Did you see the documentary? Yes. I, yes. I take the father into you know into the convention, and he's like, <laughs> and I say to him, they have another thing. I go, sort of overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You're going to get through. I, I knew that he was going to get through the day. He was. He was going to go like, oh my god, whoa, like that. But he was going to get through the day, and his fear was not going to be realized. His fear, and so much of the stuff that we seem to be involved in right now, is fear oriented. Uh, and that, I, I dare say, is, has been manufactured consciously as far as I'm concerned. So in any case, that was my reasons for doing the document. Well, thank you. It's, it's a wonderful look, and thank you so much for it. Yes, thank you. Okie doke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.